Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series for the channel. Um, as some of you may know, I am actually a zookeeper and I thought what I would do is start a series of videos on tips and tricks um, from a zookeeper's perspective to help people try and make their zoos look more realistic. Um, hopefully people will find it useful. Um, I'll be covering a different topic in each episode. So in this first episode we're going to be talking about fencing. Um, and things like that. So, if you've been struggling to make your fencing look realistic in your zoos, hopefully this will be the video for you. Okay, so, to start off, I will quickly say um, all of this stuff that I'm going to go through is pretty much based on my experience of where I've worked um, also a lot of places that I've visited and seen footage of and things like that so um, of course there will be you know exemptions to certain general rules that I kind of say things that you could do to make stuff look realistic but it's just supposed to be just a general guide for people who aren't um, as experienced in the game or haven't been to many places just to give them a few tips to help them out um, if they're looking to try and make things look more realistic so what we'll do, I've got loads of examples and things laid out here, um, so we'll go through each one and then at the end I will hop into my recreation of the zoo that I work at and we'll just have a, a look at a couple of examples just of where I've got some of the um, the techniques used um, in, in my recreation. So the first one we've got down here, we'll go through the height and the function of fences first. So hopefully I can get through this without this camera escaping. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is realistic heights. So um, obviously the game has a guide in the Zoopedia for the heights that fences need to be to keep animals in. Um, though some of the tricks that you can do in the game, um, like stopping animals from getting to fences and things like that, they can allow you to make smaller fences. Um, so as a general rule I would say you kind of want the fence as tall as the animal. Um, obviously there will be exceptions to that. Um, so things like carnivores and things, you'll probably want them a lot higher. Um, and then um, certain things, so the giraffe is a main one, you probably won't want all your fences to be as tall as a giraffe. You'll just want it to, to stop it from getting right over it. Um, but yeah, in general, your fences you ideally want them to be as tall as the animal, maybe a bit taller to account for jumping or climbing, things like that. Um, but that is kind of a general rule. Um, the the other feature of these fences um, that should also be taken into account is that they are also important things to stop guests entering the enclosure, um, not just for keeping the animals in. So um, even though a tiny little fence might look nice, um, it's not potentially going to keep someone from jumping in there with the animal. Um, things like tortoises, even though the fences would be tiny in theory to keep them in, you yeah you don't want people jumping in, so keep them to a, a decent level. So moving on, we've got overhangs, so we've got our lovely jaguar in there. Um, so overhangs are a really important part of a lot of habitats, particularly for carnivores. Um, so they are effectively, normally they would be a solid sort of support with probably some electric wire um, or they might be a more solid um, piece with electric um, additionally. Um, so the point of them is just to make it even more difficult for an animal to climb out. Um, if it has to go backwards on itself it's, it's going to be much harder. And if you've got electric there that's also a, a good deterrent as well. Um, so there's a variety of different styles you can make, obviously we don't have it as an option in the game but there are some different styles you can do so um, if you want it to look more like wire you can use the bunting rope um, or actual rope um, over here um, and then if you want it to be a little bit more solid type you could use something like this um, which is the metal, one of the metal pieces, um, the grill pieces um, to make it a bit more solid you could even chuck some wire along where these struts stick out to make it look more um, more like an electric strand as well so yeah these are a, um, a really important one for the uh, the carnivores um, you 
generally you just want them on the inside but if you have sort of another habitat over here a separate area for another species or another individual jaguar in that side you might want to have it on either side of the fence next we've got airlocks and netting and aviaries so um, the airlocks will cover first so these are another really important feature so they're important for keepers and also for guests if they have walkthrough enclosures um, effectively they they provide an extra barrier so if you were to walk in and a bird flies past you it's still contained um, and then you can make sure it's back in the enclosure before you then exit that is the function um, it's particularly important things like birds you'll get it a lot um, some primates uh, as well as some small mammals and you might also get it for certain carnivore species um, just as an extra safety barrier um, so you might have an airlock there the the difficult thing with these is to make them usable so if you've got paths and things and you want your actual habitat fence on the inside there um, your gate and then you want the impression of this other other fence on that side um, if you're doing it as like an implied thing on somewhere then it's a lot easier obviously because you can build whatever you want um, you can have a proper mesh square and just put a fake sort of door in it but um, yeah making it with the with the pathing is a little bit more tricky but it is possible like this um, so there's different styles obviously you can use so you might want metal um, you might want to use like boards and, or planks things like this um, so this whole thing could be wooden if you wanted and um, you could have a wooden roof as well I've just put one of these as a, um, a grill roof um, so yeah there's lots of different styles you can do but just be mindful of the fact that it might be difficult with the pathing but that is a really good um, additional thing that you can put on to make things look realistic things like the p-file which we've got in here um, that um, yeah that is that is a good technique to make stuff look more realistic and then we have aviaries so um, and netting things like that obviously they're a major part of zoos and we don't have any mechanic for them in the game yet um, there are some solutions you can do to try and make them look okay I think I made this one fairly quickly and I don't think it looks too bad um, it's not it's not the best but um, there are some solutions where you can get okay results so this is just chain link with a curved top and then bunting rope all the way along at an angle and then just use wooden posts for the supports um, this obviously is not a tutorial video so I won't go into detail of how you make it but um, if you are willing to make it then it is definitely something that can add a lot of realism to your zoo um, there are also some really good stuff um, on the workshop that are things like nets and aviaries that people have built out of rope and things like that so um, if you're not too sure on how to do it, or you'd um, but you still like it in your zoo, then yeah, check out check out the Steam Workshop, and I'm sure you'll find something like this that will really help you add some realism. Um, unfortunately, no birds really to go in them, but um, even for things like some of the primates, you could um, you could put some sort of top on like this, and it will look a little bit more like you have actually got some netting over the roof of it. So next one we've got anti-climbing and anti-digging. So anti-climbing is obviously important and we have got the um, the feature for it in the game. So we've got this, this little thing down here which does the anti-climbing. Um, there are also some, some different ways you can do it just to change the style up a little bit. So in here I've just put a few examples. So we've got the corrugated piece here as an option um, some places will have these kind of um, plastic tubing things over the top so they just go around the fence like this and that stops anything from uh, from climbing up it also it provides that effectively an overhang as well as something non grabbable potentially um, in two different sizes and then also just these metal pieces I think this was one of the signs New World signs um, just looks like a nice a nice smooth flat piece that the animals won't be able to climb if you want something slightly different to the one that the game provides but that is um, yeah, a very important part of design of enclosures and fencing um, we also have anti-digging so 
Obviously there's no mechanic there for digging in the game, um, or escape by digging or anything like that, but this is, in real zoos, a really important thing for things like the canine species, um, the bears, and also things like the aardvarks, the burrowing animals, um, it's a really important thing. So. Um, Obviously you, you could say in theory that this fence is dug into the ground two metres, um, but if you want to go for something more visual um, and that also looks realistic, these are a couple of the options you could try out. So this one we've just got a kind of concrete or limestone plinth effectively that goes on either side of the fence that the fence is effectively dug into and it, it provides this kind of skirting, so you could have it as wide as you want. Um, or you could have it more on that side and just sticks out there a tiny bit. It just shows that you've kind of you've got this extra defence that sticks out here to stop the animal digging straight under the fence. Or you might have something like this where there's more of a kind of almost like a wall that sticks up that the fence goes into that you would imagine then is is dug into the ground and that provides a solid barrier. Um, that way for animals to not be able to dig through even if they can go down a little bit they can't then go past the fence so yeah they are two good good options for anti-digging for those kind of species um, and then that is it for the function and the height and things um, so next we'll move on to positioning so uh, position next to the public so with a lot of styles this is fine, so with the brick, um, some of the wooden fencing, the glass, things like that, and the concrete and everything, they obviously are fine um, to go next to fencing, uh, to pathing, sorry, um, but it's where you go into the chain link and the mesh and things like that where you've got to be a bit more careful. So obviously solid barriers are fine, but things where hands and things can go through the fence is a lot um, more risky depending on the animal you've got in there so that's the main thing you've got to think of is the animal in there going to harm a person if a person's on this side of the fence and puts a little finger in there um, obviously it's not something you'd really want at all but there's certain animals that it's going to be a lot more risky for so any of your carnivores things like that you don't want this situation here a, a chain link fence next to a path you want some sort of in-between barrier or you want a solid barrier with a lot of the hoof stock and things like that, it might be more acceptable. Um, you still might want to stand off. Things with horns obviously could pose a um, a bit of a risk. So, yeah, I would I would say ideally these ones fine. These ones just be a bit more wary of where you're placing them and what species is in there. And that leads nicely onto the next one. So standoff fences. So this is one of the biggest things um, and one of the things I do see some people not really doing at all um, and it is a super important part of building a zoo and having like enclosure design all of that stuff standoff fencing um, one of the massive things so obviously you want this definitely if the animal in there is going to hurt the people out here so um, any of the carnivores anything like that definitely you need this barrier to stop any harm coming to the people um, it also stops stops people touching animals, um, even if they're not going to bite the finger off, um, and stops them things like feeding animals. It might reduce the risk there um, if there's this nice barrier between the two um, two fences. So yeah, these are really really important bits to put into your zoos if you can. It's also quite nice for theming, so you can have an, a normal fence line for your animals, and then you can theme all the standoffs. So it, it does allow for some nice theming and stuff like that. Um, you can do it in a different, different, various different ways. So you can use normal actual barrier pieces, just sunken. I normally sink all mine to just the meat at all, um, which isn't too bad height. Um, so you can use actual barrier pieces. Um, Planet Zoo has a lot of actual fence pieces. Um, a lot of them are themed as well. So if you want to use them and just arrange them in this kind of way then that is also quite good um, or you might want to make your own as well um, if you are feeling creative um, this is the kind of gap a couple of meters or so um, depends on the animal again um, if it's really dangerous 
you want a bigger one if it's not too bad you just want to keep people away from the actual fence line then you don't need to go as um, as strict on the distance um, you might even want it to be different in different areas you might want a nice big planted area here is some screening of the enclosure so you bring the standoff out but keep the uh, habitat barrier going at the same same angle um, and then you've got a nice little planted bit so yeah there's um there's a lot of different ways uh, to make them look nice um, but they do serve a very important function so really good to get them into your zoo next we've got hidden fences so in here we've got our bongo at the front had to put a bongo in obviously at some point and our little pygmy hippo at the back so the hidden fences are um, these ways of making an enclosure or making two enclosures look like one effectively so you've got a full sized proper fence in here this isn't the best one um, because of the scale and everything um, it's so tiny that it doesn't look very good um, and there's no planting there's nothing in there to screen it but um, it's purely just to show how you can use this technique so yeah you can have a full fence in there the right height to stop animals going into places but it just means that from the public side these look like if that was further away these would look like they were kind of in the same enclosure um, so for things like building big savanna habitats or that sort of thing where you maybe you still want the animals to be separate but look like they're together this is a nice technique to use um, it also might be if you wanted to have predators and prey right near each other and make it look like they were in together um, without obviously doing that because that would not be good then this might be a technique that you might want to try and use you may also want to fill that with water um, and have the fence just stick out just a little bit over the top and that looks like it's hidden that they're sharing an enclosure with water in the middle when actually they can't access through the middle um, moving on we've got enclosure shape so again this is a massive one um, that I think a lot of people seem to struggle with um, not making square habitats or rectangular habitats so um, although you will find some enclosures that are more squares or this kind of sort of very rigid shapes um, a lot of them will be a bit more sort of flowing shapes um, rather than this kind so here we've got exactly the same exactly the same animals almost the same size enclosure I think but in my opinion this one looks a lot more appealing even though the only difference is that it's got a little curve in the wall and it, I think it just looks a bit nicer um, so uh, it's we'll go into more of like actual enclosure design and stuff in another episode but um, just in terms of purely just laying a fence um, this is what we wanna wanna go for really um, it's quite easy to do if you just turn angle snap off and just keep clicking and eventually join it up and you'll have a habitat so it's it's not too bad to do um, if you're worried about making things too big or too small you could always try and lay out a kind of habitat or just lay out with terrain painting just how big you need it to be delete the fence and then roughly do another version but a bit more wiggly lines um, if you, you know, if you're worried you're going to make it massive or too tiny um, but yeah these this is a really good one for making your habitats look much more realistic and not just a load of boxes all around you also can get in these little little divots and little bits that jut out you can you can use them as nice features so you might want to put a little water feature or planter or have a, your little viewing area here in this bit that juts in or you might have a bit that sticks out that people they have education stuff around so it just it makes things a bit more interesting you can make points and features rather than just having a box where you just say okay this bits the education that is the viewing that is that so yeah it just it just looks a little bit natural more natural more realistic so next we move on to types and styles of fence so here we're going to cover in this one materials and thickness and custom fencing so we've got our lovely Indian rhinos in here both sleeping so um, obviously 
in real zoos there's loads and loads of um, variation in thickness, um, in materials, all of that. So the big thing you need to try and do is think about the species that's in there, um, the theming that you want to go for and, and the actual aesthetic you want as well. Um, and also think about it in terms of the habitat gates itself and the standoff as well um, because you probably want a completely different thing for the standoff than the actual habitat. Um, the This one here I laid out, so the game does have the in the Zoopedia um, certain strengths of fences that you need for animals but um, I wouldn't say necessarily rely on it completely um, I think from when I went through it it said that this mesh um, was suitable for the Indian Rhino because it was a grade 4 um, so I might be wrong on that but I'm pretty sure when I checked that's what it said if I went to a zoo and I saw a Rhino behind this fence I wouldn't feel too happy about it um, I would say that that rhino could easily break through something that looks like this. It might just be super super strong mesh but um, yeah for, in terms of aesthetics that doesn't look like a rhino barrier to me. Um, that looks like something that you might have maybe big cats in or hoof stuck behind it that sort of thing not a big strong thing like a rhino so um, you, if you want to sort of research actual actual enclosures that would be a good one for this see what fences animals are actually kept behind um, the same with the glass um, for certain species um, I know you can you can get glass viewing for big things like this and even for elephants like big really thick acrylic and stuff um, but you kind of want to be a bit more minimal in how you you would use them I would say for these kinds of animals um, something a bit more heavy duty I think would be called for these um, before we move on to sort of custom fencing and things, um, I would also say don't be scared to use different fencing for different bits of your boundary. So um, you don't necessarily need to just have one thing, use it the whole way around and that's it. Um, you can be free to maybe have this, if there's a reason behind it, um, a lot of enclosures will have different fencing for different areas. You might have a solid wall at the back and then this bit down here is more for viewing so you might have more meshy sort of style fencing there. Um, and then just a wooden bit screened off there. Um, so yeah, you can mix it up. Maybe not a different one for each panel, but you can mix up the um, the fencing that you're using or the barriers that you're using. Um, and then the other big thing I would say, don't be scared to make your own custom fences. Um, I know in terms of piece count, it can be a bit tricky. Um, and obviously it does depend a lot on how you're running the game and if your game's going to be able to cope, if you want to keep piece count low and stuff, but if you are willing to try it and you think your computer can handle doing custom fencing, then this is a really good one for making zoos look more realistic. So um, this is much more the style, at least for for me, and I'm and I've seen other other enclosures using that sort of style, or or maybe big sleepers, wooden sleepers um, like railway ones. Um, they are much more the kind of style for things like rhinos and elephants and that sort of thing um, even though we don't have it in the game so to make something like this and just having a concrete wall at the back is much more realistic um, in terms of keeping the animal in the enclosure so they're not too hard to make once you've got the hang of them and if you're if you're making them on a flat surface and they're all lined up they they work pretty well just make it the size of the fence panel you've used as your barrier and then you can just replicate it and then delete the barrier that you've made. Um, so yeah, they're not they're not too bad. Um, again, it's not a tutorial on how to make custom fences. It's just to say that if you want to make them, they do add a lot. Um, this is a custom standoff as well, just a small wooden wooden fence, very basic, but much more realistic um, for a lot of enclosures that you might see. Um, there are a lot of good stuff again on the workshop for this. Um, I've seen a few good elephant fencing um, downloads. So um, yeah, have, check check that out if you're not too keen on making your own and you just want to place them, because um, that will be a really good one for adding your realism. Next, we move on to the ha ha. Um, so this one could also be called like a dry moat. Um, or you could actually fill this and have it as a proper moat but um, effectively the point of these is to have 
the animals and the people on the same sort of view line, the same height, um, but to not have a great big solid fence there in the way. Um, so on the inside you've got this big slope, this big ditch here, um, which means that the animals can't actually get out. The barrier itself is all the way up to there, um, even though for the public it's just a little barrier. And they're coming over to say hello. So yeah, this is used a lot for a lot of species. Um, I know in my zoo we have this for almost all of the uh, hoofstock species. Um, so yeah, this is a really good one. It can be a little bit tricky to actually make sometimes, um, but the terrain stamp I used there and then just smoothed out that side of it and it seems to work quite well. And then you can have your actual small public fence on this side and then it can raise up to a proper barrier size on the edges. And yeah, it just, just means that you can be on the same sort of height. Instead of looking down on all the animals, you can be on a similar height to them. Um, you could also add a retaining wall, an actual construction pieces wall or like plaster pieces or something on that side just to make it um, a bit more man-made looking, a bit more realistic or use wooden, wooden pieces or something. Um, but it just depends how much you want to go into it if you want to make it look really good or if you just want the kind of idea of it um, and the view lines. Next in this one, the last one for this bit, glass and one way glass. So um, I was trying to think of a time that I'd seen one way glass in any of the zoos that I've worked at or been at and I can't think of any. Um, I'm sure there are places out there that do use it um, so it's not going to be completely um, out of the ordinary or um, unrealistic but um, and it's also important for the game mechanics I know um, in terms of the privacy and things it's a really good one for that but if you're in sandbox and you don't need to worry about that or if you've got welfare turned off or something then um, I I would stay away from the one way glass personally but obviously it depends on preference and like I say some places I'm sure do have it but um, it, yeah, it's completely up to you whether you do want to use it, but I think it's more realistic just to have proper glass. Um, but the thing with the proper glass is to use it sparingly, I would say. Um, for one, this sort of glass or the acrylic, like thick acrylic panes and things are super expensive, so it's unlikely that you're going to want your whole habitat surrounded by glass, even a whole wall like that. Unlikely, I would say. Um, again, I'm sure there are places. Um, more more realistic probably for underwater viewing maybe but in terms of actual overground viewing um, you're less likely to have a whole wall of glass the whole way along you're more likely to have just the odd the odd piece um, that's that's made into a proper viewing area with a, like a glass viewing area or you might want ones that are sunken into the wall and um, have little windows in the wall um, that sort of thing rather than yeah huge big panes of glass or acrylic so yeah that would be my tip for the one-way glass and the glass so finally just a couple of points on just some random things so fence braces so this is quite a good one for mesh um, especially things like that um, that are a bit more of a flimsy kind of fence just adds a little bit of extra support for them and is something that's used quite a lot. So what I've done here is just use the wooden fences, um, the wooden posts, sorry, for the chain link fence and just added my own diagonal pieces. So it just adds a little bit more of kind of realism for a fence um, because they might need that sort of thing. And finally, the big one with our hyenas in there, lovely hyenas. This is blending it in so once you've actually done all your fencing and everything you don't really want to just leave it all completely bare you want to kind of blend it into your the area that it's in into the habitat um, make it look like it's been there for a while like it's kind of weathered or things have grown into it um, unless you really want that sort of brand new vibe like this um, sort of section you're probably going to want maybe not as much as this but just the odd bit of this kind of thing so you can use the plants um, on the barriers to make it look like things are growing through the mesh or growing up walls and things or you might use things that are just growing in front to kind of break up the look of it a bit um, you can use the rocks like this so you again probably not throughout the whole thing but more as like a feature so you might have this big 
rock wall and you might have glass in these two panels and that's kind of your main viewing area and then the rest of it is chain link or that sort of thing um, and then you could have the fence just go in here um, the standoff go in there and then that's your viewing window and the rest has got a standoff so that's kind of the thing that you'd you'd want to aim for with the rocks um, obviously some places use rock more than others so it's completely dependent on the style that you're going for but um, that's another way you can blend the fencing in and then with buildings as well um, so obviously buildings are a big part of the enclosure and will form at least some part of the barrier normally um, often you won't have the, sh the only sh shelter for the animal on the inside of the enclosure um, you'll have some sort of keeper accessible building on the perimeter that the keepers can enter um, and then yeah you, you might have the odd shelter or something in the middle but you, you probably have a building on the outside so that can form part of your barrier um, you might even want to use other buildings so even though this is the hyena house um, where their bed is and we've got a little viewing window there you might have like a cafe or something there that overlooks it um, and formed part of the barrier itself and um, that sort of thing random buildings so yeah you can use buildings as part of the barrier to just break up and blend in the whole enclosure itself so that is all my tips for the fencing so what I'll do now is I'll hop into my recreation just quickly um, for a couple of minutes to show off a few of these in my realistic replication of the zoo that I work at. Okay guys, so we are now in my Whipsnade Zoo recreation zoo that I've been doing. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at a couple of enclosures that demonstrate some of the things I've talked about in the video so far. So we'll start down this end, so we've got an airlock here. Um, it's not detailed with gates yet, but I'll, I'll maybe try and add that in at some point. Um, and I've also made it just a purely aesthetic thing, so the actual enclosure entrance is somewhere else, which made it a bit easier. Um, we've got high fences, so the enclosure does actually have overhang, but because of the size and the shape and everything, I opted to just make the fences a bit taller than they should be um, instead. So I think it kind of gives off the same vibe, but obviously if you are able to put a... Um, an overhang on that is something that definitely will make things look more realistic especially if you have got a slightly smaller enclosure or a specific area that you'd like to do it on. Um, over this way you can see we've got moats um, for certain bits of the barriers so that you can get these short bar barriers and not have to look through fences. Um, we've got small viewing windows so these are more for children these ones who can't see over the fence and then in this little hut down here we have an actual glass viewing area so just a small one, a few panels that gives a different view into the enclosure um, and then lastly for this one um, you can see we've all got a bit of planting on the actual fences themselves so they've actually got some uh, some vines and that sort of thing growing on in various places around the enclosure so that kind of breaks up the enclosure and makes it all blend in a li little bit nicer. If we move over this way, this is the hippo enclosure, so common and pygmy hippos. So um, the main points for these ones are the custom fences really, so all of the standoff barriers are custom fences that are replications of the real ones and then we've also got actual custom fences for the hippo enclosure themselves. So we've got this um, more heavy duty sort of metalwork style for the yard areas and then for the actual enclosure we've got these kind of thicker wooden barriers that go all the way around instead um, we've also in the viewing area over here got another custom fence which is a sort of wood and glass mixture um, that surrounds the public viewing area there If we continue over this way, um, we have got our ostrich enclosure. So this is just an example of where there's a mixture of standoffs and 
public barriers that are right next to or that are accessible so even though these aren't right next to a path the path runs along the public can go obviously off the path off the road and go down to that um, fence line there but then at the front here where there's sort of more people traffic there is a standoff there um, to keep people away from the animals inside lastly we will hop over this way to this enclosure which is the gower enclosure or my water buffalo enclosure uh, African buffalo enclosure sorry and this is more again custom fencing so all this area for the yards all custom to look more like metal work um, and then we've got this inner barrier here which is shorter but the same uh, the same sort of style this kind of light metal and then we've got a standoff which is fairly fairly wide um, but it does change sort of down in this direction here it changes and it gets a bit thicker and you've got some trees and things in there um, and then you can also see that the whole thing is set a bit lower down um, from the path itself or the sort of fence line itself so you get a, a bit more of an uninterrupted view with shorter fences and things and then the more you go up this way um, the higher the fence gets so that is just a little a little look at a few of the techniques that we have gone through in the video um, in actual real enclosures um, I have put a pack of all the custom fences and gates and things that I've done so far um, onto Steam so if anyone is interested in some of the stuff that I've made um, you can check them out on my Steam page which is Bongo Hardwood as well as this and um, perhaps feel free check out all the other all the other great stuff that's on there as well custom fencing all that sort of stuff you'll find a load of good things on there um, if you are keen to download stuff instead of making it yourself so that is it for this week's episode I hope you've enjoyed this first one in the new series and I hope it's helps you and it's giving you some sort of insight into the ways that you can try and make your zoo look a bit more like a real zoo um, if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to, um, to see future episodes and all the other stuff that I'm doing um, if you have any comments, um, any thoughts or suggestions of things you'd like to see in future episodes in this series then yeah, leave a comment down below and I will see what I can do about them uh, check out the recreation as well, so this zoo I've done a whole series on what I've done so far so check out my Whipsnay Zoo recreation on the channel um, I've also started a discord um, so check that out if you're interested and a twitch if you're into the live streams I've been doing uh, live streams on Twitch and on YouTube, so um, yeah, if you would like to, then check any of those things out. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.